this is the formula that we have just shown. And this is the quantity that figures in the arithmetic integral. And here's the expression for it in terms of the vector equation of the curve, which is the way the curve is described by its vector equation. So in a practical setting, when you want to evaluate an integral for a particular curve, you need to evaluate this quantity. So how do you evaluate this quantity? And so what I want to say, I'll make a simple point right now. It's very difficult to do when you don't have a coordinate system in the ambient space. So just for demonstration purposes, and we'll dig into this in great detail in the second part of the course, I'll just show you how to do it when we have Cartesian coordinates. And there's really nothing to show because that's exactly what you would expect. What you will do is you'll express R as functions x of t i. Here come your favorite vectors i, j, and k. This is something that I've advocated against on the basis of two things. First of all, let's not use coordinates when we don't need coordinates. And secondly, when we do use coordinates, let's not use a specific coordinate system, but a general coordinate system for which we don't specify any of its special features so that we're not studying the properties of that coordinate system, but rather the properties of our geometric curve, geometric object. So here I'm violating one of those two principles. We do need a coordinate system. Without a coordinate system, this is very hard to evaluate for just about any function. But I'm seriously violating my second principle, uh, which we won't in the next quarter, of choosing a particular coordinate system, and not just a particular coordinate system, the most particular and the most generic and mundane of all coordinate systems, which is Cartesian. And now you'll do what has been, this is R, and actually of gamma. So now you have your x of gamma, y of gamma, z of gamma. And if I call this the vector equation of the curve, I would call this the scalar equation of the curve, or also equations of the curve, that's where plural helps you, because there now maybe it's a set of three functions, so equations of the curve. And now you would do, which I ridiculed when we were just talking, when we were just starting to talk about derivatives of vectors. I said when you think of taking the derivative of a vector, you just think of taking derivatives of all of its components. This is still worthy of ridicule because it works only in Cartesian and then maybe affine coordinates where the coordinate basis vectors do not depend on gamma. Actually do not depend on everything. That's the only way that it could work. If these were polar coordinates and the coordinate basis changed from point to point, we haven't talked about ambient coordinates at all, so we'll specify all of those quantities in the future. You simply could not do this. Okay? But then, of course, this vector dotted with itself, it's x prime of gamma squared. And because we need this under the square root, this goes under the square root. That would be the formula, and this is practical. So one of the problems on the final is to calculate the curvature and the uh, uh, torsion of a helix, right? So you, would, you will need this formula. You'll introduce Cartesian coordinates in the ambient space, and boom, you have the formula for the derivative of arc length as a function of gamma, so that's what you'll need, okay? And the final demonstration of the quarter will be to show just how impractical arc length parametrization is. It's the best parametrization for geometric insight and theory. Everything works out so beautifully, I can't argue with that. But even the simplest curve cannot be parametrized by arc length. And for the simplest curve, let's consider the parabola. Okay? What would be the equations of the curve for the parabola? Well, it'll be 
Can you think of simpler equations? Yes, I could. You know, gamma and gamma would probably be simpler. Also, sine of gamma, cosine of gamma. If you plug it in this, will work out quite nicely. It'll be one, but that's it. Right? Straight lines and circles. That's the only two curves that will work out simply. I will think very hard today and tomorrow of another curve that works out simply so you can do it on the final. But I don't know of another curve right now. So then S of gamma, S prime of gamma equals, that means that S of gamma itself, right? Okay. So if we wanted to parameterize this parabola by the arc length, we would need to evaluate this expression and then solve for gamma. You guys agree with me? Solve for gamma and substitute it in here. So now you have your expressions in terms of arc length. Well, if you were to evaluate this integral, which I did using Mathematica, it's a function that you could not possibly invert, right? It's a function that even in the direct form is not easy to work with, but there's absolutely no way to invert it in terms of elementary functions. And if you did, it would just have special function and would just be very simply not worth it, right? So even if a curve as simple as a parabola for which we did so much using Archimedean methods, right, is impossible to analyze in, or impractical to analyze in terms of arc length. So you need tools for analyzing curves and surfaces in terms of arbitrary parameterizations, and this is a good first step towards that end. Thank you very much. Enjoy your break. <laughs>